We're going to read from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Evrei capitolul 1, 6, versetul 1 și 2. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Romanian in the Cornelescu Version. Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles or the foundational principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of... and of... Of the doctrine of baptisms, number three, of laying on of hands, four, of resurrection, of the dead, five, and of eternal judgment. In Cornelescu, așa traducem, de aceea să lăsăm adevărurile începătoare ale lui Hristos și să mergem spre cele desăvârșite, fără să mai punem din nou temelia și a Dumnezeu. Învățăturea despre botezuri, plural, despre punerea mâinilor, despre învierea morților și despre judecata veșnică. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Domnul să vă binecuvinteze. Are you in there? Can I go? I'm trying to... Ah, there you go. So tonight, as you, as you know, we want to go from uh, the first kind of foundation stone, this cement block from Lowe's that is heavy. Uh, that my son uh, helped me kind of put up here, but I just want to do a recap, uh, recap or recapitulation, the full word of last week. I won't take too long, but I just want to remind you there's some new faces that were not here last week and just want to remind you step one or the first foundation stone in a believer's, in a Christian lifestyle is repentance. Every, everyone say amen. amen. Repentance. You cannot go. And we said three things. Well, we'll go through three things. But we said churches are confused. People are confused. Church members are confused because they are told very many what God will do for you. He's going to heal you. He's going to bless you. He's going to give you favor. He's going to be with you. In the but they are not told what God requires from you. And one of the first things we said, repentance, both in the Greek and, and the Hebrew, they're translated, it means to change. Everybody say change to change your mind, to turn around. And one of the best examples is the prodigal son, Fiul Risipitor, who goes out into the world, he, he messes around, he does all the stuff he wants to do, all his feelings, all his joys, but then he turns around and comes back to the Father. And we said that last week. So there was three things. Number one, you're going to help me out, ready? There is no other way to faith except through repentance. There is no other way to faith. If someone, if the world is, if the, if, if, um, if anyone else tells you something differently, search out scriptures because the Bible is very clear. You cannot come to Christ unless you repent, number one. Number two, any other way that claims to get you there, to faith, is a deception. Te minte. It is a lie from the world. It is a lie from Satan. It is a lie that tries to get you to believe something else. But the Bible is very clear. If you're going to come to Christ, you're going to have to repent. You're going to have to be baptized and believe. And it's very clear before and after the resurrection, church after church. And number three, we said true faith. If you're going to have true faith in God is impossible without repentance. You have to change. You want to have faith in your healing. You want to have faith for the cure. You want to have faith to get married. You want to have faith for babies because you can't make babies. The Bible is clear. It is impossible without repentance. And last week, finished with this thought, as we finished last week, that repentance is not an emotion. We said the quote, um, you know, it does not help if you cry. It only helps if you change. Not because repentance can't be emotional, but true repentance. You made a decision. It's a decision that you made with your will. It's not because you felt bad. Judas felt bad. He gave the money back. Remember, he sold Jesus for pieces of, 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 of silver. He gave it back. He was remorseful, but he did not change. So true repentance is a decision. You have made a decision to follow Christ. You have made a decision to change your mind. So that sets up tonight where we want to talk about faith. Everybody say faith. Faith in God. Credincioșia în Dumnezeu. And tonight when we go, it's a, it's a little bit of, of a longer teaching. I'll try to go quick, but I need you to help me. I need you to have your Bible. If you have your Bible, go ahead, get that Bible open. If you have an app, go ahead, open up that app. Because tonight we're going to read God's Word. And it's not so much that I'm going to, but we're going to do it together. Someone say amen. 
I don't want to take the journey by myself. I want to read God's word together. If you're young, great. We need English readers. If you're old, great. We need Romanian readers, right? So I want us to take the journey tonight together as we study faith in God. Now the first thing that you have to understand, the Bible was not written in English. It wasn't written in Romanian. So you have to go and say, okay, what is that faith word? What does that mean? So in the Greek, in the New Testament, when they talk about faith, it's the word pistis, which means to be persuaded. Everybody says persuaded. persuaded. You have been persuaded. My, <laughs> my convince, man. My convince. Cel mai tare, cel mai tare din parcare, the best sandwich is Chick-fil-A. My convince. Gata. You know, it's you have been persuaded. You have come to trust. You have come to believe. In the Hebrew, it's a, it's, it's a concept of faithfulness. And most of the time, it's used in faithfulness. You have been faithfulness. And we're going to talk about that. But I'm going to talk about five biblical faiths, five natures of biblical faith. And the first one, I will need you to help you. Number one, faith as used in the Bible always means, come on, faith in the Word of God. Not faith in a doctor. Not faith in the American Bar Association. Not faith in the Republican Party. Those are different things. But when people talk about faith in God, number one and always number one is faith in the Word of God. It is not faith in yourself. It is not faith in my health, in my wealth, in my savings account, in my strength. It comes, listen, from faith in the Word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says this way. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by So where does faith come from? The Word of God. Credința vine în urma auzirii, adică auzirea vine prin cuvântul lui Dumnezeu. You have to read it. Now, Paul, who wrote this word in Romans chapter 10, he was an educated man. He spoke multiple languages. He had multiple, if you will, college degrees. He had success, but he understood that faith doesn't come from education. Some will say amen. Come on, church. Some will say amen. Man, how many people have I heard they got PhD in theology, but they cannot believe? You know what I'm saying? They have a man sit a shot de doctorats, a shot de complicats. They're so complicated, but if Jesus shows up and tells them something, then I don't know if I believe that. And the Bible says that if you're going to have faith in God, if you're going to repent from your ways, the second stone in your lifestyle as a Christian needs to have faith in God. And when it comes to faith in God, you have to hear the Word of God. Someone say Amen. Just as Abraham, everybody say, believed God. He had a revelation. Some of you are here, you don't know very well the story of Abraham. Abraham had a dream where God shows up and says, pack up. Pack up your luggage bags, leave your mom and your dad, okay, get your wife, get your kids, and move somewhere else, somewhere in Siberia. Move somewhere else. And Abraham, the Bible said, believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, Galatians says, now there are only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. How can you be a person of faith? A person of faith is someone who believes God. Someone say amen. When God spune ceva, îl crezi pe cuvânt. Îl crezi pe cuvânt. You believe what God has spoken to you. I want to tell you, if you're a person, it takes faith to obey. Someone say amen. amen. It takes faith to fast because your flesh is going to be hungry. It's not going to want to. You're going to be in a meeting with a client or with a customer, and your stomach is going to start going. <laughs> I know because I've been there. It's going to take faith to pray. Even on Super Bowl Sunday, it takes faith to pray. Someone say amen. It takes faith to give money that you wanted to go on vacation with. That does not belong to you or that you know someone in need. Nevoie are nevoie. It takes faith to give. Domnul spune, take your money that you saved on your vacation, that you wanted to buy that new, I don't know, that new cabinet, that new, uh, I don't know, that new laundry room, that new, I don't know, refrigerator. Take that money and give it to your neighbor. It takes faith to give. Amen? Mă, cum așa, man, frate, cum așa? But it takes faith to give. So the number one thing, faith is in the Word of God. Everyone say amen. So if you're going to have faith, You're going to have to go, number one, to the Word of God, which means lead to number two. The nature of biblical faith, number, number two, is faith has a single source and a single focus. What is the single source 
of faith? God's word. Come on, I put it up there. It can't be that much. What is the single focus of, of faith? So the source must be scripture. Someone say amen. You cannot go to a commentary. I'm sorry, those commentaries are good. It helps you expand. It helps you different things. You can't even go to a preacher. You cannot go to preacher David. I'm sorry. You have to go to the single source and the single focus if you're going to have faith. And that is the word of God. Now, I've sent some of you this text message about two weeks ago as I was studying this, but I want to share it with the whole church tonight. You do not love God more than you love His Word. You do not obey God more than you obey His Word. If you want to find out what place God has in your life, find out what place the Bible has in your life. Some of you have dusty Bibles, and that's why you have a dirty life. Some of you don't know what faith is because your Bible isn't open only on Sundays. And tonight God is saying to you through his word, not through a preacher, that if you're going to have faith in this Christian walk that you are living, if you're going to have faith in your marriage, if you're going to have faith with your children, there has to be a moment where you say this word of God is going to become alive and active in my life. Someone say amen. Because faith comes from hearing the Word of God, not from hearing a preacher on YouTube, not from going on another Netflix series. It comes from the Word of God. And if the Word of God is not active in your life, the entrebare, the logical conclusion is lack of faith. What place does the Bible have in your life? Because that's what place God has in your life. The single source, the single focus of faith is the Word of God. Anything that is not based on the Word of God is not biblical faith. It's someone's opinion. It's someone that you think is cool, their perspective. It's someone that you think is maybe accomplished or an influencer. But it's not based on the Word of God that is not biblical faith. Hebrews chapter 11, which is the best chapter you can ever read. On faith you should highlight that you should put it in your in your scripture you should talk about it because it gives example after example man after man a woman after woman who had faith and what they did in their life because they had faith Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 starts out like this you can read according to Lesku I'll read it in New King James Version now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence everybody say evidence you are confident but I have the evidence. I'm Bonnie and Banka. I have the certainty of things not seen. That means you cannot experience faith by physical senses. I'll say that again. You cannot experience faith by your physical senses, by what you see, by what you hear, by what you taste, by what you feel. Faith is none of your physical senses. It is something that is not seen. And there is a standard that you need to understand as a Christian. That God expects his followers to have faith in him. Someone say amen. That's why when, when disciples of Jesus get baptized, the question is very personal and it's all about faith. Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose again? Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God, the anointed one who came to forgive your sins? Do you believe? So now... The nature of biblical faith, we said number one, is faith in the Word of God. We said number two is faith in a single source and a single focus. Say those words with me. A single source and a single focus. Say it again like you mean it. A single source and a single focus, it is the Word of God. Now the third thing that I get excited about is these next three points. Number five is not going to be convenient, so better jump in on number three and number four because five is going to kind of get to you because it got to me number three faith is here and now it's for our lives here you do not need faith when you're in heaven come on church you don't but i see Gabriel, Michael the angel. Michael, tell me how you fought those the Persians' demons in the book of Daniel. You don't need faith because you see it. All of a sudden your flesh is gone and you see the men and women of faith. You don't need faith in heaven. You need faith here and now. And the Bible says that hope is for the future. One more time. Hope is? Faith is the substance in our hearts. We're going to talk about this. And we can have a legitimate hope. Adika, you can be an optimist. 
Aleluia! Mă, am speranță pe, fiindcă l-am pe Dumnezeu. I have hope because I have the Lord. There, there, is a, there is a certain optimism. I'm not talking prosperity gospel. Hear me. You are optimist. Mă, îmi greu acum, but I have hope for a better future. Amen? Jeremiah 29.11 says, I have hope. Am nădejde. I have hope for a better future because of my faith in God. Now, I want you to open up. And this is where I ask you guys to have your Bibles ready. I, I'm going to ask you in, in, uh, in Romanian and in English. Roman, capitolul 10, versetul 9 și 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. I need an English reader and I need a Romanian reader. If you could stand and help us out tonight and you read God's word, declare God's word. So we understand that when we have faith in God, what that means in our lives. Aveți? Noua și zece. Roman zece, noua și zece. Poftiți. And everyone said? Amen. In English. Go ahead. Loud. Look at what the verse says, verse 9. You believe in your, on your Facebook feed, <laughs> on your Instagram scrolling. You believe where? Come on, church, where? You believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead. And then it goes to verse 10. With the heart one, come on, come on, come on, come on, church, come on. With the heart one, so where does your faith come from? In, in God comes where? Not in your mind. We're going to talk about that in a second. It has to start with your heart. Do you desire God in your heart? Is your love for God in your heart? Does it start in your heart? Biblical faith is not in the mind. Faith is in the heart. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. And then in the book of 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to show you this verse. Paul shows us a beautiful picture. A beautiful picture about how the heart and the mind work together. So, 1 Thessalonians, o să pun și în românește, acolo aveți în românește. The first part is New King James Version. And this is Paul writing. He's a theologian. He's a teacher. He's an educated man. And he says this. He says, let us who are of the day, that means children of light, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. The breastplate of faith. One more time, church. The breastplate of faith. Faith comes from the heart. Now watch this. And, and love, and as a helmet of hope. One more time. Helmet of hope. So look what he's saying here. He's saying faith is in the heart, and the breastplate that you put protects what? Your heart. As a spiritual armor unto God, if you're going to have faith, you're going to have to guard your heart. You cannot love the things of this world. Someone say amen. You cannot go ahead and subscribe to different channels that don't have nothing to do with the Christian life. Someone say amen. If your heart's desires is going to be for this world, it's not protecting your heart. It's not protecting your faith. Your heart, your faith resides in your heart. And the Bible says here, Paul says, protect your faith, protect your heart. And the second part that we read is hope is in the mind. And what does the helmet protect? Your head. <laughs> Put on your helmet, pe motocicleta ta. Yeah, ma, you have to protect your mind if you're going to have hope. Now, now I want you to think of practical example. When, when there's a spiritual attack, when people try to get you down, when people try to discourage you and take your hope, they're trying to attack your mind. Negative thoughts. Psychological warfare in, in, in you know, Russia, China, America. They try to take away your hope. And the Bible says if you're going to protect your hope, you have to protect your mind. If you're going to protect your faith, you have to protect your heart. Amen, church? Amen. So biblical faith, this is the third part of this number three. Biblical faith is a word of motion. Someone say verb. Someone say verb louder. Verb. Se mishka. It moves. 
In other words, if something has movement, it is alive. If something doesn't move, it is dead by natural. So if you have a child, I know there's uh, David's son, Jacob. I can see him. This is what I picture him. I see a dead lizard, a different dead snake or a crab, whatever. And he gets a stick and he sees it on the floor and he pokes at it. And I want you to get this picture. He pokes, Jacob pokes at this thing and he pokes and it doesn't move. What does he conclude? Whatever that, it's dead. But if he takes that same stick and he pokes that crab, that snake, whatever it is, and it starts moving, it is alive. If you're going to have faith, biblical faith, in your life, it has to cause you to move. Someone say amen. It moves your money. Oh, you're preaching now. It moves your vocabulary. It moves your friendships. It moves you all of a sudden to adjust your thinking and your living by the faith that God has given you. In the book of Hebrews, going back to this wonderful chapter that, that Paul wrote, some of you like to argue and say Paul didn't write. When we go to heaven, you'll see that we were right. In Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about guy and person after person that had faith in what they did. And it says, by faith, Abel, what did he do? Offered a sacrifice. Did it cost him something? It cost him something. But he showed that action, that verb. He had to get up in the morning, had to build a fire, had to go get the, 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 the sheep, had to cut it, had to, had to take off the, the, the skin, had to cook it, had to put it on the sacrifice. It cost him something. By faith, Enoch was pleasing to God. He walked with God. If you're walking with God, can you walk with other people? Not really. Not people of this world anyways, right? Saints, other people who walk with God for sure, but you can't walk like everybody else. These people in Hebrews chapter 11 knew and understood that God is choosing them and has called them from out of this world to shine for them. By faith, Noah got really good with his hammer. <laughs> he got really good with nails. And he got going to building an ark, a big boat. By faith, Abraham, like we said, left the homeland. He packed. These are all showing actions. By faith, Abraham lived in a tent. Look at verse 11. I love chapter 11, verse 11. By faith, Sarah got pregnant. All the men said amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Facem fapte bune frate David. We're going to make some babies. But that's if God's plan for you in faith. Amen. The... Yes, yo, you guys are all asked on your screen. Read verse 11. I'm not making this up. By faith, Abraham was tested. By faith, Isaac prophesied to his sons. By faith, Jacob blessed his grandsons. By faith, Joseph prophesied that his bones would not be buried in Egypt, but they would be taken where? To the promised land. By faith, Moses was hidden by his mom and dad. By faith, Moses refused the world's offers. He gave up a palace. He gave up the White House, if you will. He gave up, I don't know, the Taj Mahal. He gave that up so he can live in slavery, in flies, in, in places that me and you would not probably choose. But by faith, he did so. By faith, verses 27 and 28, he forsook Egypt. He kept the Passover. By faith, the people of God passed through the Red Sea. By faith, the people of God saw the walls of Jericho fall down. By faith, Rahab welcomed Hebrew spies. Now, this is big. Think about that. The enemy becomes your friend. The enemy becomes your salvation. And many of you know this, but I want to remind some of you. Verse 31, Rahab, which was a harlot, she was a prostitute, changed. She repented. She changed. And you know she's in the New Testament? How is she in the New Testament? She's in the lineage of who? Jesus Christ. Man, you're telling me God can use a person that was that dirty, that unclean, that worldly, and change him into the lineage of Jesus Christ? Yes. That's in your Bible. It's not something a preacher is making up. This is what God says. If you repent and have faith, ooh, if you have these stones in your life, if you have these foundations, God says, I can do a miracle. Faith, one preacher said, is like acting that God is telling the truth. Dumnezeu mea vorbit. And I'm buying stock in Amazon. Dumnezeu me vorbit. And I'm selling stock in Tesla. I don't know what it is. But there is something that when God tells you, you do something about it. Dumnezeu a zis să postez. You start fasting. And your wife's looking at you. Bă, astăzi nu... Ți-am făcut sarmale. Ți-am făcut mititei. Astăzi nu... Yes. God told me to fast one day a week. 
Faith is saying to yourself, okay, God has spoken to me, and I've heard what he says in my life. And the last thing before we go to point number four, and I want to say this because it's very important. Many, there's some people that get all doctrine. Doctrina, frate, doctrina es importante. And it is, 100%. But in the Hebrew and in the Greek, and I'll have this discussion with whoever wants to, online, offline, in person, I'm going to tell you something. Both in the Hebrew and the Greek, when you read the word faith, it is not a matter of doctrine. It is a matter of character. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit is looking at your character and at my character, and he's asking us if we have faith. Let's keep going. Number four, biblical faith relates you to the... One more time like you can read. Ready? Biblical faith relates you to the... Adika ceva eternal. Something eternal. Something that is greater. Cum zicea fratele Micha, fratele Vasi, in the time of worship, they said, and I forget which one, but they said, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. You cannot worship God just by singing nota fa. You cannot worship God just because you worship in English and Romanian. The Bible is clear and it says when you worship, you need to worship with your spirit. It starts in your spirit. Biblical faith is going to take you from the visible to the invisible. In other words, it's going to take you to the eternal. Things you don't see. You ever thought about things you don't... Hi, this just voice. Things that you don't see. Ce nu vedeți? Ce nu vedem cu ochii noștri? What don't we see? Come on. What beings do we see that or don't see with our, with our flesh. Angels, demons, host of heavens, right? The archangels, different people, armies, the, the principalities, the Bible say, the strongholds, right? People's spirit, people's souls. We can't see those things. Those are invisible. And the Bible says that when you have faith, it now relates you into the invisible. Now watch this, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. How was the world created? By the word of God. So that the things which are seen, were not made of things which are visible. Hey, I'm, I'm a big bang theory. Ah, hi, come on. Boom. Boom. And the Bible is answering that question right here in verse 3. No, it didn't come from things that you see. The source was not things that you see. The source was the things you do not see. So biblical faith takes us beyond, everybody say beyond. beyond, the realm of the senses into the realm of the invisible. Paul puts it very simply like this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by and not by, we walk by and not by sight. When you got a bill and you've been faithful, you've been giving, you've been praying, you've fasting she's vinet parca toată lumea în cap everything is coming against you that is when you need to quote this verse and say enemy devil i know that god has promised me that i do not walk by sight but i walk by faith hallelujah in tine parca crește credința because you did not invest in the stock market you invested in the invisible someone say amen you invested in something that god said trust me and i will provide for you are you giving, are you giving so you can see? Are you giving, are you believing in the invisible? <coughs> Biblical faith, and we're just about going into number five. Biblical faith, when you see, you don't need to believe. Everyone say amen. Because you see it. Alves. Alves. Seeing is not believing. Can you say that with me? Seeing is not. One more time. Seeing. It's called seeing. Or testimony. Bă, am fost și eu acolo, frate David. Frate Daniel, am fost și eu acolo. That's a testimony. That's not a faith. That's not, because you saw it. You saw it. That's a testimony. But believing is something you do not see. And a great little cute, I don't know, example is one of the disciples. And his name is Thomas. Do you remember this? John chapter 20, verse 24 and 25. Now Thomas called the twin. He was a twin. One of the 12 disciples was not with them when Jesus came. So Jesus died. He was resurrected. He shows up. But Thomas isn't there. He's at the all-you-can-eat buffet at Golden Corral. Okay. So he missed out. The other disciples therefore said to him, Thomas, listen, 
we've seen Jesus. He said, unless I see his hands and, and, and feel the nails where the nails and my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. He's not trying to believe. What's he trying to do? See. He's trying to see. He's trying to see. But seeing is not believing. Just because you can't see the way doesn't mean that God doesn't have a way. Someone say amen. amen. So that's why we walk by faith. That's why we walk by faith. <laughs> word of God. Word of God is a single focus. Word of God is a single source. Word of God, number five, and this is what I want to really touch upon in the next five, ten minutes, and then we're done for tonight. Biblical faith will be... Oh, menche, rivna, vets. Hallelujah. Biblical faith will be tested. I want you to think about the example. The disciples are out in a boat. Storm comes. And it's really bad. Some of the disciples cannot swim. I know they're fishermen. They should know how to swim, but they can't swim. And the storm comes, and the boat's about to capsize, flip over. They don't know what's going to happen, and they're really afraid, full of fear. And then someone, they feel like they see something on the water. But it's raining, and it's cloudy, some storms, there's some lightning. And then it almost looks like a person walking. And this is crazy, right? Crazy talk. Walking on the water. And then as it gets closer, it actually looks like who? Looks like Jesus. And then Peter, who is the first one to talk, right? He doesn't have a filter. He jumps and he says, Jesus, if it's you, command me to walk towards you. Okay. Some of us have faith to my zichim sheva, right? Bowling. Yeah, kukurad. I mean, flate. Yes, we have the boldness. But then Jesus says, come. Oof. What does Peter do? He puts his feet out on the water. And every other time in his life, before and after, when he put his foot in the water, it went through the water. But this time when he puts his foot on the water, it feels like it's solid. And you know when the moment of faith comes? When he shifts his weight from the boat onto the water. And he starts walking on water. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Your faith will be tested. By faith, Abraham, when he was... Come on, church. When he was offered up Isaac, his only son. He had Ishmael, but this was the promised son. This was Isaac, the, the, the son of his wife, Sarah. Not of a slave girl, not of Hagar, but of his wife, Sarah who he had received the promises offered up, his only begotten son. Prin credință a fost pus la încercare. Your faith will be tested. Faith that is not tested oftentimes is not faith. It's just lip service. It's not tested. In Luke chapter 8, verse 13, Jesus gives the example of seed that fell on different types of soil. Hard soil, rocky soil, good soil. And he says this in verse 13. Those on rocky soil are the people who, when they hear, receive, and welcome the word of joy. Right? So they become Christians. But they have no firm grounded root. They're not firmly grounded. They believe for a while. Oh, che bine prosperity gospel. Che bine e cântoți. My wife's a size two. I have 500,000 in a bank. I got a boat. Yeah, yes. This is the faith for me. Right? And the Bible says they believe for a while, but in time of testing and temptation, they fall. These are the words of Jesus Christ. These are the words of Jesus. James chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Why? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces... <laughs> Wait, you're telling me, preacher... My faith is going to be tested? No, no, no. The Bible is telling you tonight that your faith will be tested. There are seasons of testing, and then there are seasons of favor, there are seasons of blessing, but then there are seasons that God is going to watch and say, okay, are you faithful just because of this? Or are you faithful to me? One more verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. 
Each one's work, this is to the church in Corinthians, will become clear for the day, the day of judgment, will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work and what sort of is. Were you faithful to God because the preacher was your buddy? Were you faithful to God because it was convenient? Or were you faithful to God because you had faith in the promises of God in your heart? I want to invite you to stand. And last week we talked about repentance, how you have to change, how you have to say no to the things of this world. And to, tonight we talked about faith, how when you have faith in God, it has to be firmly rooted in the word of God. The focus is the word of God. The source is the word of God. If it's not based on the word of God, that's not faith. That's not the faith in the word of God. And I want to, and I want to finish with this prayer. It's an old, uh, old prayer for men and women who were faithful, men and women who went uh, before us. And it says these simple words, and I'm going to put them up. What we know not, teach us, Lord. What we have not, Lord, give us. And what we are not, make us. And tonight, I want to invite you to ask the Holy Spirit. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, where in your life does your faith need to grow? Because as a foundation stone in your life, before we get to healing, before we go to spiritual warfare, before we go anything else, there's repentance that has to happen in your life, and there's faith. These are foundations. It doesn't change. Next week, next year, uh, 10 years from now, it doesn't change. What we know not teach us, Lord. What we have not give us, Lord. And what we are not make us, Lord. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray here as I stand before you, but I want to invite you. Not to talk to man, but this moment to talk to the Holy Spirit. Domne, increase my faith. I know we had a teaching tonight on faith, but I want to know you personally. And I know this is the word of God is based on your word. And I want my faith to increase.